Hey folks, welcome. I thought I would do a quick video because there is a new Harn Kickstarter up and I wanted to give folks a chance to take a look at it. So right now we're looking at the Kickstarter page and as of this filming, this has 13 days to go. I'm going to release this in two days. So if you're watching this video when it can't, comes out, there'll be a good 10 or 11 days left to get in on this. Um, this is a product line that I've been with and following for a long time, as you might know if you've been following the channel. It's one of kind of the, the very narrow focus areas within role-playing games that I do cover here at Ardwolf's Lair. Um, and I think the folks at Columbia Games are doing a, a lot of good work to promote the setting after a very long time uh, that this setting was idle. So this Kickstarter's made its goal already, and they've released several previous Kickstarters of hardcover volumes of hard material. But this one's going to be kind of the centerpiece to tie it all together, because this is going to be the kind of master deluxe color hardcover setting book, the Harn World setting book. You go to the Kickstarter page, there's a link in the video description. Uh, we're going to just walk through it real quick, walk through the pledge levels, and then I'll show you exactly what you're going to be getting in this Kickstarter in hard copy if you buy into this Kickstarter. So let's take a quick look. Um, we can see down here, it's it's a wonderful setting. It is a deeply medieval setting. Um, it is a tonally um, flexible setting. So you could run it as a really low fantasy setting if you want. And that's kind of how a lot of people take it and have taken it historically within RPGs. Uh, but it's got a lot of dials that you can turn different angles of the setting up. And there's a lot of high fantasy elements in here. So you can run it as literally a very low fantasy Game of Thrones type of thing. Very, very good match for this setting, by the way. Um, or you could run it as a high fantasy dimension hopping game if you want. All that's like in the setting. There's orders of wizards and weird monsters roaming around. So all the high fantasy elements that you would expect in a traditional fantasy RPG setting um, are here in Harn. But the overall background flavor is one of uh, like sort of middle medieval uh, history, right? Harn itself is patterned relatively closely after Norman England, uh, or Anglo-Saxon England, I should say. There are elements of Norman culture in there as well. There's elements of the invading Vikings up in Orball, all kinds of historically flavored stuff, and it's all very well done enough that you do have to kind of be able to see uh, under that top layer to see the historical uh, the historical basis for a lot of this stuff. And it's a mix and match, right? It's 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 uh, it's not just like this is you know England in in 1050, um, and that's it with you know maybe some names changed and some serial numbers fouled off. It, the setting's a lot richer than that. Um, highly recommended to give this a look if you're in the market for a fantasy RPG setting. This works fine with D and D of whatever edition you like. Um, I think it works really well with RuneQuest. Um, Again, pretty much whatever flavor of RuneQuest you like, except for the current edition from Chaosium that's very tightly tied into Glorantha. I wouldn't try and kitbash that into it, but several previous editions of RuneQuest are setting uh, system setting neutral, and you could easily run any of those in Harn, and it would work just fine. It is a setting uh, that is system agnostic. There is a system to go along with it, Harn Master, which you can use or not. Um, the world materials don't generally give you stats for Harn Master, though. So um, I like Harn Master, but it, a lot of folks have found it unapproachable. I don't agree with that, but uh, but there have been several editions of that, and some of them have been more approachable than others. So so bear all that in mind. So the basic cost here is sixty nine dollars for the two hundred and fifty six page full color hardback. And that includes all of these articles, which we'll be taking a look at in a moment. Um, this includes, well, we're not going to go through what it includes because we're going to go through what it includes. So we'll save that for a moment. It also includes uh, the PDF version of all of this stuff, and it includes the big map of Harn. Um, and we'll take a look at all of that. And there's a couple of different pledge levels here. Uh, but the basic one here is just the the hardcover for sixty nine dollars, which two two fifty six pages at sixty nine bucks is really not bad nowadays. Uh, and going by the previous um, uh, Columbia Games Kickstarters for Harn, uh, the production quality is going to be really high. The paper quality is going to be really high. So this is going to be a big book. Uh, there's a bunch of retailer pledges in here that we're not going to go through. If you're a retailer, by all means, you should be carrying Columbia Games material. Uh, they have a bunch of other hardcovers that are also available. I've shown some of those on the channel before. They are very nice. Uh, let's take a look, however, at the actual material that you get. So this is, this is let me pull this down. This is the, uh, the, uh, the Harn World article, 
and this is a 60 page article it's full color this has been available in pdf for quite a quite a long time at this point um, and i believe i've shown this before uh, but you have a, a lot of really really great detail here on the, the island of harn it's a very large island um, you have cultural and political maps and, uh, you know, various maps showing various things on the setting. You have overviews of each of the various kingdoms that exist on Harn. There is a dwarven kingdom and an elven kingdom. Um, they can be misty rumors, if you like, uh, but uh, they can also be the focus of your campaign if you want. Uh, there is, and there is a tremendous wealth of supplementary material available in, especially in PDF, which you can get either through Drive Through RPG or you can just go to get them from Columbia Games directly for this setting. So, like almost every site that, like these all these castles and 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 uh, interesting locations and stuff, almost all of them have something like a four to sixteen page article on them. The cities have like fifty or eighty page articles on them, and I've gone through cities of Harn in the past as well. So check all the previous Harn content out. It's all wonderful material. Um, but the important takeaway here is that it's a great setting that has uh, richly detailed uh, over the course of several decades. Um, I was introduced to Harn in, I want to say, the early 90s as a setting for Rollmaster, uh, which we did successfully use a number of times. I've run it in a couple of different um, systems at this point. I've run it in Rollmaster myself. I've run it in uh, Harnmaster. And I've run it in D&D. Um, so, you know, you can do what you want with this setting uh, in terms of what system you want to pair with it uh, and also in terms of how you want to set a campaign tone. So um, <clears throat> a lot of details about the cultural and political structures that are present on the island. Uh, this is heavily inspired by medieval Europe, but there's, you know, there's a lot of good material here. Uh, including a lot of like baseline things that you can use to develop your own little corners of the island. This also works really great as a hex crawl setting, by the way, because there's a bunch of kingdoms, but they're they're fairly small kingdoms, um, and there's a lot of wilderness, so there's a lot of places to explore. Um, so going through, we've got badges of the various guilds, discussions of the guild system. Uh, we've got a price list, which frankly they probably could have left out of this particular article, but it's here anyway. Uh, a, a section on the coinage. Uh, section on what one can expect as income if you're in one of these guilds or if you're in an ungilded profession. And these professions are all professions in the Harn Master system, by the way. But in a different system, say D and D, uh, uh, you know, again, whatever, these can just be kind of backgrounds. It's like, okay, you were, you know, you were born to a family of shipwrights or whatever. Um, and this is what the shipwrights can expect to make. Um, in something like RuneQuest, that can be used to inform your sort of background skill package uh, that you uh, create as part of creating the character. Uh, we've got an economic map that tells you where different goods come from. Um, and I've always found this kind of thing very useful for building flavor in a campaign. It's like, ah, oh, you've signed on as caravan guards. Well, what's the caravan carrying? This this economic system will give you that information. Is that vitally needed? No, but I, I really want to have it. So, but then again, you know, I'm fairly fussy. Um, there's a section on religion and on the Celestia and Celestia, which is sort of the, the cosmos of, of that Harn exists within. Um, there are the different worlds that are connected to Harn in a in a metaphysical way. There's a short discussion here on that. We'll see more on that later. Um, there's there's uh, sort of the the religious background is over here on this page. And then we get uh, discussions, decent meaty discussions about the 10 gods that are found on Harn, or at least major gods. There's some minor ones too. And the various tribal cultures, uh, again, is something that fits extremely well into RuneQuest because you have your RuneQuest in terms of uh, cultures are civilized, barbarian, nomadic, or primitive. Uh, I think they're not calling them primitive anymore, but um, <clears throat> all four of those things have their correspondences in Harn either as part of the kingdoms or as uh, among the barbarian, uh, the tribal nations. Um, we got a note on church, church hierarchies. Here's the history of Harn. I've always found this extremely well-written, uh, fascinating, and laden with adventure hooks. So you're going to get a whole bunch of pages on that uh, fascinating history of Harn. And of course, if you want to zoom into any of the kingdoms, there are there's a kingdom module available for each of the kingdoms. 
Now, there's also a book uh, called Harn Master Religion, which is sort of the current god source book, but that is, well, it gives you more detail on the gods. It also gives you a lot of Harn Master specific game information um, that you might not have a use for unless you're using Harn Master. There was an old book called Gods of Harn, which left all the system specific stuff out. Um, and I'd kind of like to see that come back. Be Take note, Columbia Games. Um, more history, where there's history all over the place, a huge section of history. But again, this history is chock full of adventure hooks. Literally every paragraph in this history section, there's an adventure seed waiting to happen or, or even a whole campaign. you got a big timeline here, which is not incredibly detailed. Uh, you could generate your birth randomly if you want, or you can just pick off these tables. That's cool, too. And then you've got a key to the regional map and weather generation tables. Now, there's a there's a program that you can use to do the weather generation for you. And I you know don't recall what that's called. I, I have it somewhere. Uh, but even if you don't use that and you just use this, and bear in mind that this weather generation system is built for the island of Harn itself. It's not like you could just use it anywhere. Uh, but it's it's one of the coolest weather generation systems I've ever seen in an RPG. And if you don't, whether you do it algorithmically or not, I would generate all this in advance, like generate it for a month, and then you know you just look it up and say, ah, it's raining now. Great. So. Uh, there's also a system of watches, six watches per day, that I, I find to be a very useful structure. And then there's uh, there's the back cover here, uh, which I don't know where that'll show up on the physical volume. But you also have uh, this map on the left-hand side, which is called the Poetic Map of Harn. This is a an in-setting artifact. And when I've run Harn in the past, I've actually made a, a color copy of this on a fancy parchmenty paper, burned the edges a little bit, maybe soaked it in some tea and then handed this out. And then that becomes, th this map becomes the physical map that the characters have of the island. And there are similar poetic maps of all the kingdoms and some other locations as well. So also you got that 60 pages, plus you've got Harn decks. Now this is an incredible, the, the most recent physical version of the Harn world setting does not include this, the, the physical copy. Um, but you did get it in one of the previous Kickstarters, and I, of course, have it. Uh, this is an absolute gold mine. So what Harndex is, is it is a glossography of the entire island of Harn. Let me pull this into a more easily viewable format. Um, with a little introduction, and then it literally goes alphabetically and gives you some information about every everything on that regional map, all, it, plus a lot more, all the kingdoms, all the gods, all the clerical orders of those gods that are attached to those various temples, all of the cities, towns, sites of interest, uh, even all the mountain peaks are on here. Um, and a, again, this is rich with uh, adventure hooks, but it's also one of those things, it's kind of like Wikipedia, I'm sure at this point all of us have spent stayed up late into the night on Wikipedia just clicking from article to article to article. This is kind of like that. Um, gives you a ton of detail. This is also full color, so it's all, it's also pretty well illustrated, um, and it's 157 pages on its own. So there's an a, an enormous amount of aside from the sort of the high level detail that the Harn World article gives you, um, and again, this is going to be in the hardcover. Um, this gives you a lot of additional details to flesh that setting out with, and you even get some reduced scale maps. This, for example, is the city of Coronan, which is the largest uh, city in Harn. Uh, and the towns tend to be relatively small. They are walled towns, properly speaking. Uh, but tons and tons and tons of information here. We also get uh, the Cities and Towns article, which is an eight-page article that just kind of gives you a baseline of here's how cities and towns operate. Here's some brief overviews of the various cities and towns. Here's how they tend to be governed. There are a couple of different types of towns. There are like feudal towns that are run by a feudal lord, and there are chartered free towns that are governed based on a charter from the king or other governmental entity, um, as it were. So taxes and tolls, this can be important. Um, so you get a bunch of usable detail there. Um, you also get the Kathira article, which is the, Kathira is the planet that Harn is located on. Um, and if you look at, this is the entire planet, right? And you can see the tiny little island of Harn right up here. I hope that you can see my mouse. Uh, that is the setting for Harn World, but you also have this entire planet if you want to go do something different out in an unexplored land. Um, you get all kinds of Atlas-style maps. Here is a vegetation-style map. There's a whole discussion of what all those things mean. Um, there is the ocean currents map and prevailing winds map. There is a tectonic plates map. 
Um, there is sky charts to tell you what the northern and southern skies look like and a full set of constellations, including a Harnik zodiac. Um, and they actually give you, you know, information on the solar system that Harn is in as well. This, the sun is called Nolomar, um, and there are five planets total, as I recall. Yes, indeed. So uh, you get a lot. This is not necessarily useful information unless you want to run a really high fantasy campaign. Um, Spelljammer is is a is a is a. If you're running a Spelljammer campaign, and there might be folks doing that now since it came back out, uh, Harn is a totally a, uh, or Kathira, I should say, is totally a planet you could visit in Spelljammer. But I wouldn't necessarily, I don't feel like you'd be getting the most out of the Harn world setting if you were doing that. But you could totally do that. And this actually gives you the the tools to do that with. Um, the, the constellations, on the other hand, are a flavor element that, you know, you could bring in, ah, uh, Lado the galley is high in the sky, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, we also get the Lithia article. Now, if we go back to the, if we go back to this map, uh, you see the tiny little island of Harn over here. Well, this giant continent, the largest continent on Kathira, uh, is the continent of Lithia. That's the continent to which Harn is kind of offshore. Um, and Lithia, the Lithia article is also great. It's got 33 pages. Um, and I actually own the original Lithia product that Columbia Games did back in the 80s, and it's a wonderful product. But all this material is 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 in there. Um, you get tons of maps of the continent. Uh, this one shows the major cultures that are present there, uh, the cradles of civilization, where civilization originated. Again, you got tons of history here, and it's interesting history and not boring dry history like you might have gotten in high school. Um, you've got the topography and vegetation map. Obviously, this is super high level, but it's here. Um, you've got the economics map that shows where the trade goods are. I've already talked about why I find that kind of thing useful. Um, you've got the languages. Uh, this is... Uh, was revelatory to me. Uh, there should be a language map. Here is a map of all the languages and language families found on uh, Lithia. And of course, you know, the offshore islands such as Hepakaria and Harna as well. Um, I'm not going to turn this sideways to look at it, but you've got a, a complete language, uh, you know, uh, language tree here with what languages are related to what languages um, and the map to go along with that. These are all the major languages that are present um, in this entire huge continent. Um, this, to me, was was very inspirational. Um, you've got information on the scripts, which are separate from the spoken languages, and including a, a zoom in to the Lakis alphabet, or Lakisa, uh, that was, that, that's the primary uh, script used in Harn itself, for example. Um, you've got a a sort of mini Harn Dex, a Lithia Dex, if you will, that's, I don't know, 10, 5, 10 pages or something like that, uh, that gives you all of the uh, sites that are named on that Lithia map. Uh, and there's, again, this is rich with adventure hooks. Uh, it gives you kind of extra material outside the island of Harn to work with if, if you wish to do that. Uh, if you want to have a, you know, traveling adventurer's campaign going all over the place, you can totally uh, get started with this. Uh, and then you've got the big giant Lithia map. Uh, the physical version of this is one of my prized gaming possessions, uh, but it's a it's a really attractive map. This was originally done as like a it's not full twenty two by thirty four, but it's about half that size in, in the physical version. And you could of course you know take this to a print shop and print this out and stick it on the wall of your game room if you wish. Uh, but just a beautiful map with a lot of names and detail on them. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that along with the hardcover, and you get PDFs of all this stuff as well, um, you also get the glorious full-color poster size Harn map. Now, I've got a four or five of these physically, actually. Uh, so, you know, there's one going up on the game room wall at some point. Um, and in fact, I've got all these maps that I may actually cut them up and put them together because that would be cool. Uh, but this is a, a wonderful, beautiful, usable map, and it, it also sh uh, allows us to highlight, actually, just, you know, how much unexplored territory there is on this island. Uh, you've got the Kingdom of Rathim down here. This is a pretty mostly civilized area in the sort of Tharg River Basin down here with the Tharg Republic and the Kingdom of Kanday. You've got the large feudal Kingdom of Kaldor over here and the enigmatic Wizards Kingdom of Meldarine, which is mostly on this island, but they've also got a little uh, exclave up here around Thay, and they're making incursions down here in the Solora area. That That's getting messy. 
and you know we can explore that in another video uh you've got the elven kingdom of Ivale down here the dwarven kingdom of azidmir up here and the uh occupied by the uh, viking peoples of the north kingdom of orbal uh where the local jaren population rests uh uh, unhappily, shall we say, under the Ivinian boot. Um, but there's, you know, up here in Nathella, Equith, Paran, Athul, this whole salt route, salt route trade between Kaldor and the Thardic Republic. It has a long caravan route that goes through a, a lot of uh, hostile territory. Uh, there's all kinds of interesting things that can occur along that route. There are other trade routes on the island as well, each of which has its own individual article. Uh, but I think you will not be displeased to, uh, to have this map. It's a beautiful map. It's incredibly useful, practical map. Um, and it, it's, you know, good enough to hang on your wall. So that's been a quick look at the new Harn World Kickstarter. Get in on this while you can. Um, I will put a link to it in the video description. If you're in the market for a fantasy, a richly detailed fantasy setting that's got a lot of ability for you as a game master to kind of control the control tone and power level and all that, uh, give Harn a look. And there's really never been quite so good an introductory package as what you're going to see in this hardcover. So do check it out. Um, if you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Please let me know in the comments if you would like to see more Harn content. Um, and if so, uh, you know, I, I will try and get some out. We've been trying to do that for a while now. Um, I'd like to give a special shout out to the patrons of Ardwolf Slayer. Without whose support and assistance, none of this would be possible. So thank you, patrons. The best way to help support the channel in many ways, you know, just thumbs up in the video helps support the channel. Um, but it, otherwise, the best way is through the Patreon. If you'd like to, you know, give a couple bucks here and there, um, there's a link to the Patreon page in the video description as well. Thank you for watching. And until next time, happy gaming.